Now, when we have independent random variables, expectation and variance behave really nicely, especially when we start taking linear combinations of those random variables. Now, this is worth spending a little bit of time on. Let's say that we have two random variables, x and y, with expectations e of x and ey. Then given some constant c, if I take the linear combination x plus cy, then this new random variable has expectation equal to the expectation of x plus c times the expectation of y. That is, expectation is linear with respect to combining random variables. Now, the proof of this is pretty much a straightforward writing out the definition. If I compute the expectation of x plus cy, I really have to integrate x plus cy with respect to the joint probability. I'm going to break this up into two integrals using the linearity of integration, and I really now just have to worry about integrating x and then integrating y with respect to the joint probability density, that is rho of xy dx dy. Now here is where the Fubini theorem comes in, because depending on whether I'm integrating x or y, I'm going to arrange the order of integration so that I wind up revealing the marginal density integrals within there, so that in the end, this expectation is really just the integral of x times rho x dx plus c times the integral of y times rho y dy. That is exactly the result that we were looking for. That's the expectation of x plus c times the expectation of y. Now, you may or may not care about all the details of that, and you may be wondering, why do we care about linear combinations of random variables? Well, we're going to see some good applications of this soon. But for now, stick with me, and let's think not only about expectation, but about variance. Now, here's the thing. If you have independent random variables, x and y, and you know their variances, then the variance of the linear combination, x plus cy, is the variance of x plus c squared times the variance of y. That means that variance is a little bit different. It's quadratic with respect to how you rescale a random variable. Now, this is fairly apparent from the definition of variance. The details of the proof are a bit complicated, but stick with me here. What we really need to do is look at the difference between x plus cy and the expectation of x plus cy. Take that difference, square it, then integrate with respect to the joint probability. Now, we know what the expectation of x plus cy is. We just figured that out. So if we do a little bit of rearrangement in these terms and then expand out that quadratic integrand, then we get three integrals. One is quantity x minus e of x squared. The second, pulling out the constant c squared, gives us the double integral of y minus ey squared. And then that third term is kind of weird looking. But because of independence and a little bit of Fubini, we can pull out the marginal densities there and conclude that that third double integral, the one with the mixed x and y terms, vanishes by definition of expectation and the fact that we have independence and can break it up into the product of these two integrals. In the end, that gives us our result, that you get the variance of x plus c squared times the variance of y. Now, you may not remember the details of this proof. You might want to remember that middle term, that, that mixed xy term that vanished because of independence, because Someday, soon, we're going to think about what happens when you don't have independent random variables.